why. We are at the halfway point of our examination of the many incarnations of the Harlequin of Hate, and today we tackle a truly iconic performance. Apologies in advance to those of you who are sick of hearing about how amazing this version of the Joker is, because truthfully, he is amazing. And today, we're going to look at why. We're after one point from each category. Performance, story time, laugh factor, era appropriate, and of course, legacy. So while we're waiting around, this is going to be a long one. Without further ado, Heath Ledger. The Dark Knight. Performance. One point. Where do I even begin? When Warner announced the casting of Batman's greatest nemesis during the pre-production of Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins sequel, the world collectively cried, Say what? That guy from A Knight's Tale? For real? Because that's how we spoke in the mid-2000s. I swear. Over eight years since the release of The Dark Knight and 99% of the universe still can't see anyone else in this role. It's primarily down to the astonishing performance Ledger gave and just how quickly his unexpected delivery won everyone over. And you didn't disappoint. This version of the Joker gets two introductory sequences. First, the bank heist, which shows how cold and calculating he is as a criminal, first and foremost. And then, the mob meeting where he digs his claws into Gotham's underworld and shows us, the viewers, his intention to dominate it all completely. But first, he has to gain their allegiance. What makes him a frightening, threatening presence is just how much this Joker is playing with his poker face. At no point, none at all, do you know what this character is thinking. You only know that he's having an absolute blast toying with the mob, the police, and above all, the Batman. I could write an essay on this Joker's nuances, his idiosyncrasies, the way he switches from malevolent predator to giddy terrorist just like that, but I'll leave you with this summary. Ledger's character was most certainly not the one we were expecting, but was everything we had hoped for. The Joker, whether he looked the part or not, was very much on screen and brimming with life. Me? I was right here. Story time! One point. Not gonna lie, this was a close call, but after realising that despite not having clear enough an outcome or motivation, something which, on repeat watches, becomes apparent in every Christopher Nolan film and can be both a blessing and a curse for the eventual product, this Joker steals the story from everyone else. Much like Hamill's turn in Batman Mask of the Phantasm, the Joker plays a part in getting the ball rolling and then sits back to let the chaos play out, occasionally throwing in his two cents to mess with our hero's head. Though Harvey Dent's campaign and Bruce's attempts to win back the heart of Rachel are story enough, the Joker is there to introduce complicated conflict after complicated conflict. He keeps Batman on his toes, and more importantly, thanks to a complete lack of origin story for the Joker himself, the audience are also never quite sure of what to expect from him, and if that isn't gripping, I don't know what is. Laugh Factor! One point! Another tough category to decide, as this Joker doesn't really have the laugh that we're used to, but then again, this Joker is not an incarnation that we're used to in any way. Before now. His wry, mocking chuckle in the mob conference scene is memorable enough, but it takes a keen ear to listen out for when his laugh really matters. This Joker uses his laugh for two things. The first is to intimidate or frighten his enemies, case in point, the footage of his tormenting the Bat Pretender, but the second is much more interesting. You see, the only other times when this Joker is laughing is when he is thoroughly enjoying himself. The moment his henchman gets a shock from Batman's cowl. <laughs> just before dropping Rachel out of the penthouse window, as he's plummeting to his death, seconds away from securing Batman's reputation as a murdering psychotic. These are the only flashes of the man beneath the war paint, the human being who up to this point has only represented chaos and fear. Here, he laughs instinctively, and as these are the things that give him joy, it further dehumanizes him, making him a force of nature and evil, rather than a man to be bartered or bargained with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. And that's why this Joker gets the point. As the fire rises, he'll be cackling away the entire time. <laughs> Era appropriate, one point. 
After Batman Begins hit the silver screens in 2005, comic book companies took note of the realistic tone and how refreshing it was to audiences. Marvel made some of their lighter books a bit darker, DC's Earthbound stories became much more gritty, and the world waited to see how Christopher Nolan would toy with the Bat mythos his second time round. Scarecrow had been the only fantastical element in the first movie, but never too far-fetched to distract from the film's desired vibe. Ra's al Ghul, or is it Raz Nolan, had been turned into a ninja cum terrorist as opposed to an immortal warlord. Heck, even Zaz was just a dude with a knife instead of a rambling psychotic who kept cutting and cutting. A bleached, prank-wielding madman would have offset all of the excellent groundwork from three years prior. So as unexpected as Ledger's interpretation was, it fit in perfectly in the post-begins world. Legacy. One point. As I've mentioned before, rarely do you find anyone comfortable with the notion of recasting the Joker. Heath made his mark, and as his final completed performance before his unfortunate passing in early 2008, cemented himself as the Joker to be respected and admired. His death added a bittersweet note to the film that will keep it relevant amongst film fans for years to come. As for the impact the role made on the world at large, since 2008, this is the most common costume you will find being worn by people at Halloween. In the comic books, DC even let the Joker have a Chelsea grin for a time. The Brian Azzarello penned graphic novel Joker features an Elseworlds version of the character that is not too far removed from the Dark Knight version, and looks like Ledger's incarnation as well. Zod help the poor souls who have to follow up Heath's performance in all future live action performances, because much like the smile on his face, this Joker has carved himself into history. There's no going back. You've changed things. Forever. Total, five out of five. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. This Joker fought his way to top marks with that single whoopee cushion or laughing fish in sight. But as he's neck and neck with Mark Hamill's incarnation of the Joker, it's going to be interesting to see how these two face off later in the series. Heath's Joker begs the phrase, often imitated, never bettered. And yet, he's not the only person to portray this incarnation of the Joker. Bonus Joker, Scott McClaw from the Joker blogs. Links below in the description is the Joker Blogs, a YouTube channel that started out as a fan film-like experience from a group of actors featuring this incarnation of the Joker that evolved into a full season of stolen footage tapes, further evidence episodes, and a traditionally shot second season. Following the events of The Dark Knight, we get to see the urban terrorist known as the Joker go through therapy sessions with Arkham Doctor Harleen Quinzel. The taped meetings are somehow being leaked onto the web, and by the mid-season, things quickly spiral out of control. To say much else about the story or the execution of the narrative would ruin it, so go and check them out, especially if you'd like to see more of the Nolan verse. Scott McClaw, that's him, that's his autograph right there. Scott McClaw takes on this role for the series and he does a phenomenal job. What starts out as a halfway decent impression of Ledger's Joker fully evolves into its own take on the character, much like when they recast the role of James Bond. Scott's playing the same dude but he puts his own spin on it. You know something, Steve? I think you'd make a great head of security. But you can't. Because you're dead. Consider this my honourable mention to the fella and the amazing team behind this series and the phenomenal work that they did on it. Fingers are still crossed for a season two finale, guys. Where have you been? So, if Heath is your definitive take on the Joker, give this video a thumbs up to give him a chance of winning the viewer's vote for the end of the series. Next week, it's time to be brave. And BOLD!